Hi, it's Josh from Under the Table Hot Sauce. I'm here with my friend, the star of the show, Jimmy Farrow. Yeah, what's up, JB? Nah, nothing. It's been a hot summer, and for all your barbecue needs, you can go to UndertheTableHotSauce.com. 13 unique flavors to choose from, created and bottled in a Long Island kitchen. UndertheTableHotSauce.com. Let's go chow, JB. Let's do it. All the flavor, twice the burn. Tell you what. Well, you know the whole story when I, we did the NWO. Uh, drove around with them for three days, right? No, I know the story, but well, maybe we share it with her. John, before you get into Hogan, I wanted to ask you, were you a fan of Hogan growing up just like we were? Cause I've never I had a Hogan Mania shirt. So you were a total zone. Yeah. You must have been excited as shit when they b- were bringing the NWO. It's he, early in your time was, in the company. That was probably, I, oh, no, that was probably, that was the only time I really, like, marked internally out. marked out. There we go. We did a shoot. Well, I didn't do the shoot. Um, they brought them to Stanford, to the studio. So if you look at any of those original three-guy NWO photos, those are taken by one of the free. I, I assisted. And I walked in and saw him now. I was like, Mm. Mark moment, and we would when we started talking to him. Cool dude, and he was asking for Steve Taylor, who was the original photographer. Mm-hmm. He was the first WWF photographer. Got into event operations. Tom took over, and then Tom tired me. Tom left. I took over. It was like the three of us uh, in succession. And he goes, uh, "Where's Steve Taylor?" Because he remembered him. Because they spent and Steve would go and like babysit on the movie. He told me that's the guy you should try to have on. I don't. He won't drive down. He lives up in New Hampshire, but. Because he was, he was the guy through the heyday of the 80s, 70s, 80s, and right. uh, early 90s. And uh, he would babysit Hogan on the movie sets so, and shoot production still. So he was with Hogan all the time. We're like, or he runs event operations. You know, we'll catch him at a show. And we just started talking about different stuff. And he, I said, dude, we used to love, I used to love watching somebody like Tuesday Night Titans. He goes, God damn, we were so high. That was the only way to get through that show. <laughs> But they were cool. But we did. So Mike knows the story. So we'd the ma- when when they had the magazine, there would be a every now and again there would be like a seventy two hours with somebody or forty eight hours. I know I always my one buddy that still works you know still freelance for the company told me about the forty eight hours with Steve Austin, and the famous line was they were all in catering talking with Vince going over something and Vince goes what are you doing. He goes, well, we're doing 48 hours with Steve Austin. He goes, why don't you make it 47 and a half and take a break? <laughs> Basically told him to get lost. <laughs> so we did 72 hours. Over, it was over the, uh, the No Way Out run. Milwaukee, Chicago, Rockford, Illinois. So I said, you're going to go with one of the writers, rent a, the biggest SUV you can find, and drive them around. Okay. So we get there, and I, I think the writer he goes, this is the biggest one they had. It wasn't a Suburban. It was like... Well, you know, there's no way we're going to fit, like, you know, Kevin Nash is 6'11", Hogan's six whatever, Hall's a big guy, and us two, and the bags. So, like, we got to figure something out. So, the first day, we're in Milwaukee, they're, like, they're having breakfast, we're hanging out with them, we go to the gym with them, we get in the car to drive to the building, which is across the street, where we stay at the same height in Milwaukee, building's across the street, and uh, Kevin, goes, Kevin Nash is in the front seat, he goes, uh, put your seatbelt on. I'm like, excuse me? He goes, Put your seatbelt on. I'm not driving unless you put your, you're not going anywhere until you put your seatbelt on. I'm like, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> he was, I'd have the seatbelt on. I, I'm not going to argue with you. Right. But, you know, then, then it would, then it became, we, you know, we, whoever we told, it might have been Shane McMahon. I, like, we can't, we, we, I don't think we could do the three days with, with everybody in the car. I will get a limo. So I rent the limo. Everybody thinks. We specifically rent the the company specifically rented a limo for these three guys, and there was already uneasiness from most of the talent roster that these guys were here, mm. especially the WCW guys <clears throat> that left that didn't like them because they took over the show. And I explained to people we didn't get you know then they're coming up to me. I said we couldn't get a big enough SUV for for the five of us. They got a limo. There was not a specifically, you know, I had to sit there and explain to, <laughs> explain to people. But a lot of stuff was squashed because Steve and Kevin were tight. Austin. I guess Steve and Kevin were chatting a lot. Things were kind of eased up amongst everybody. And then Steve was starting his program, I guess, with uh, Scott going into Mania. But uh, sitting in the car, I was like, you know what, let's have somebody go out and get beer so we have it for the car ride. And the guys are probably going to want to have something to drink after the show. <laughs> so... 
about to get in the car and Hogan goes, eh? They're going to need some adult beverages. I said, oh, I already got it taken care of. Puts his hand and goes, brother, I think I'm going to like you. I'm like, <laughs> so we had to cool it with beer. And, and I, I honestly got 98% of the stories were off the record that they could not, like, were never going in the magazine. Just how they manipulated getting more money out of Turner. All three of them, but the, the shit they used to pull. Mm. All kinds of crazy stuff and whatever. Oh, they were just telling us everything. It was just who fought in hotel rooms, who had prom. You know, it was like brawls, who was this, who was that. And I'm like, these guys are out of your mind. Interesting like dynamic. Free for all. You're telling me Austin was tight with Nash. How did he receive? Hey, what's up, Kevin? And I look at Hogan like, you prick. I mean. I don't, I don't think he really had much to do about it. You know, Hogan was the rock was wanted his match with Hogan. And, you know, they went they went back, you know, because of Rocky Johnson or whatever. But, I, you know, I Steve, I don't really recall. I just remember Steve talking a lot with uh, Kevin, you know, the first couple of times they were back. Because they were backstage like a month, month before in L.A. doing scans for the video games. And that's when shit started getting like, <clears throat> people like, what are these guys doing here? Mm. How was Scott Hall with you? Uh, were you shocked when, you, you know, he passed away? He was, uh, well, when he, he came back at that time, he was taking these pills that if he drank, he would vomit. Right. Oh, okay. So he wasn't drinking at all. Okay. And he was cool. He was telling us. I mean, it just, I mean, what they, the, the ribs they used to pull on people just made, kind of made me shake my head and go, you know, we gimmick somebody's drink. I, you know, I just, I don't really quite understand some of the stuff that mm. these mm. guys would do. They thought were funny, but with us, there was never, in fact, <laughs> we had a, it's like, we got to go to the bathroom. So we stopped and we pull into a parking lot of an office building and we're all outside taking a leak. And Scott Hall goes, doesn't matter how much money we have, we're all just white trash. <laughs> so we popped. I popped here and that. You That's know, like, great. <laughs> that was hysterical. All so, right, one final question because we're almost out of time. What? Relationship <laughs> between Vince and Shane McMahon that mm. you saw, did they have a good relationship from what you could see, or did you feel there was some kind of I think he was, little, he was hard on Shane. He was. Yeah. What, Shane, he, Shane, I love Shane. Shane's a great dude. Um. I think Shane has more of his mother's personality. Okay. Stephanie's more like Vince. Okay. Um, it's just, you know, I think it's your typical parent-child business. Like, you're running a business, you want to pass it off to your kids. Did, you Vince, have... did Vince intend Shane to be the heir apparent, but just it was Stephanie who clearly had more of his uh, makeup, or...? I, I don't know, to be honest with you. You know, it's that whole crazy stuff at the Rumble last year. Right. We didn't know any, you know, I don't know, how, I don't know what's who's... Who's got heat with each other? Or who's right. going? We just, you know, we go out and shoot the show, and then you hear about everything the next day or the two days later about, you know, they sent them home. We got heat with the boys or whatever. I, mm. I don't know. A guy jumped off a freaking damn yeah. hell of a cell. I killed twice. himself many times for his father. But absolutely. But would you would you see any kind of interaction between them at all? Yeah. That made you I was feel in some like... meetings with them, and uh, you know, he would he would get a little short with shame. Really. You yeah. ever catch a full blown argument of any kind? Like, you know, nah. me? Really? Yeah. Okay. So, Johnny, I'm, I'm, really, 